up, guys? Welcome to another episode of The Girl Who Talks Sports, the podcast where we talk sports and other girly things. I'm Sam Cardona, and thank you guys so much for listening today. We have a great show lined up. However, uh, this is the first episode in quite some time that we don't have a guest on this week. It'll just be me doing some Super Bowl prep, talking about some blockbuster trades, some rumors are going around, we got some tea, we got a little bit more of a serious discussion at the end of the show as well. So I'm really excited. I haven't done the whole show by myself in quite some time, but nonetheless, I'm excited. Also, I'm sorry if I already sound hoarse. I had recorded half of this episode already and my microphone once again was not plugged in so I love that for myself uh so we're starting from the beginning (laughs) so before we get into our show today we have to do our plugs don't forget to follow us and subscribe on all podcasting platforms google Podcasts, apple Podcasts, spotify wherever it is that you get your podcasts from please make sure to subscribe and leave a podcast review for us that would be really helpful You can also uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Uh, The Girl Who Talks Sports. We post full length podcast episodes as well as extra content videos, uh, which are very, very fun. So make sure that you check out um, our YouTube channel and turn on the little bell to get notified every time that we upload a new video. And also don't forget to follow us on social media, TGWTS podcast. That's TGWTS podcast podcast i have to sneeze <laughs> excuse me um and uh the girl who talks sports blah 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 blah, blah. i am now disheveled from sneezing so yeah so don't forget to follow us there on both twitter and on instagram so uh we have fun times on the social medias so don't forget to do all of that and that's gonna do our plug so without further ado let's get into our show And I want to start with the most groundbreaking thing that happened this past weekend. Um, let me, let me start from the beginning here. I was in Brooklyn. I was in Brooklyn in my car. I was driving home. I went to go see my cousin. So I drove over to his apartment to say hello. And it was about 10 or 1030 at night. And, um, once again, I had my phone on my little vent clip. And I, uh, was minding my business. Don't look at your phone while you're driving. Okay. Thanks. So I was driving and I was sitting at a red light and I happened to glance over at my phone that lit up and it had the little siren emoji. And I said, Oh, how exciting. Breaking news. I look and it says, ah, yes. Uh, in case you missed it, Matthew Stafford is now a LA Ram. And oh, what did he, what did Detroit get for him? My goodness, they got Jared Goff. And I freaked out. And I was in my car and I was driving home. And if you follow me on Twitter or Instagram, I posted the video there, um, but it's still on my Twitter page. So I would go there and check it out, TGWTS podcast. And you can see my full reaction when it first happened. I used a couple expletives. So... Um, I was freaking out. The fact that Matt Stafford not only went to a team that I was not expecting him to go to, but the Lions then received three draft picks and Jared Goff. I was perplexed, just absolutely floored, really, just out of my mind. And it was, and I was trying to filter my emotions, like I'm driving on the Belt Parkway at this point, and I'm like, oh my god, what is going on? I'm blasting driver's license by Olivia Rodrigo because I'm like, I don't know how else to process my emotions anymore. So it was an eventful Saturday night. Um, (laughs) This whole thing is absolutely wild. Uh, First of all, I, a lot of people, including myself, thought that Matt Stafford would end up at San Francisco. We thought he was going to California, right? But not LA. I really thought he was going to California, uh, to San Francisco. A lot of people thought he was going to San Francisco. There was also a couple talks about him going to the Indianapolis Colts after losing Philly Rivers, and like he kind of fit that scheme. I was like, cool, um, that seems awesome. And then when it came out that he was going to the Rams, I was like, oh my god, the Rams don't need a quarterback. But oh look, 
they gave up their quarterback for this new one to go to the Lions. Now, for the Lions on their end of the things, this is this is good. They're rebuilding. They have a new coach. They have a new quarterback. They have a new team. Like, this could be really exciting for them. For the Rams, I think that this will work out for them. So, Jared Goff really didn't do much for me in L.A. And despite Sean McVay being a young, intelligent coach who's got a photographic memory, just... Incredible, really. I remember when he won Coach of the Year. I think it was 2018 or something like that. I was like, wow, like just incredible. Really, really amazing. So um, I I was just like, okay, Jared Goff is gone. I think that with a new quarterback, maybe this will mesh well together. Maybe they'll have more of a schematic partnership, if you will, Matt Stafford and Sean McVay seem really stoked to work with one another. And Jared Goff, maybe he needed a new team to portray his excellence. You know, Jared Goff did end up in a Super Bowl. Did he throw a touchdown or win that Super Bowl? No. But he got there, despite it being based off of a pass interference call and, uh, you know, snubbing the New Orleans Saints. But I digress. I digress from that. So this whole thing really blew my mind mostly because of the fact of what the Detroit Lions got for Matt Stafford, including Jared Goff. So they got a 2021 first round pick, sorry, 2021 third round pick, 2022 first round pick, and 2023 first round pick. So the the Rams are just never going to pick in the first round ever again, basically, it seems like at this point. I will be like 85 years old by the time the Rams can pick in the first round again. And um, that really made a lot of people were like, okay, so who won this trade? If the fact that the the Rams were able to give up that much plus Jared Goff and they just received Matt Stafford, like who won this trade? And to be quite honest, I think both, I think it's pretty equal. I think the Rams are getting a new quarterback that might fit their ski. They have great receivers. They have a fantastic defense. They are a good team. They were just really boring to watch which I've said several times, and maybe Matt Stafford, maybe it spices it up a little. Maybe it makes them even more good, even more good, better than what they were before. Um, Jared Goff, I think, was holding them back a little bit. And Jared Goff in Detroit maybe needed a different mesh there, maybe with a new coach, maybe with Dan Campbell. That is a better partnership for them. So I am stoked for both of these guys. I'm excited to see what's going to go on. I am so excited for this offseason. Oh my God, people, let me tell you this right now. This offseason is going to be spectacular. We are going to get notification after notification of the most insane things that are happening because I'm just so excited. It's like, I think like 18 teams need new quarterbacks or have the possibility of getting a new quarterback. That's almost all of the teams. That's more than half of the team. So it's going to be very eventful. I'm very excited. I am stoked for the draft as per usual. I'm stoked for, I would say, the combine, but that's not happening. Um, So yeah, it's going to be a great offseason. And this started right off. We're not even finished yet. We still got one more Super Bowl game to go. And this is how we started it off. I am here for it. So I also just want to mention a quick little stat. And you guys know I'm not... I'm not really into the stats of things, but Matt Stafford is extremely underrated. And I'm going to tell you why right now. This year, this man's total yardage is 4,084 yards. And over the course of his career, he his yards are 45,109. And he played a hunch, he's played 165 games. And if we do a little bit of math and we divide that, It's about averaging 274 rounding up yards per game. So I don't think that that's too shabby. And I think that if you're an LA Rams fan, I would be stoked. I would be really excited to have someone like Matt Stafford on this team. This could be really exciting. This could be a new wave for you. Maybe you end up in another Super Bowl. Who knows? Matt Stafford's never been to the Super Bowl. Could be a new, a new leaf is being turned over for Detroit and the LA Rams. So that is what's going on in our blockbuster trade. I suggest watching that video of me freaking out because I've been told by several people that I am crazy. 
All right, so let's get into just a couple of rumors, some trade rumors that I have heard, because I don't know how true some of them are, but we're going to talk about them anyway. Uh, One of them being the fact that Kirk Cousins might be dipping from Minnesota, which is interesting. And the the people, the team, I should say, that are most interested in him are the San Francisco 49ers. Now, a lot of people thought Matt Stafford, including, like I said, including myself, thought he was going to go to the 49ers. Now that he's not, like, what's going on with uh, San Francisco? What's going on with Jimmy G? What's going on in the quarterback situation there right now? So um, the fact that there are rumors about Kirk Cousins going there are interesting because I have also just seen rumors about Jimmy G not leaving San Fran. So is he going to end up being a backup again? Is he going to go somewhere else? I know George Kittle came out and was like, he's the best. I love Jimmy G. We could go to another Super Bowl with him. So it's interesting. However, I think San Francisco is pushing hard for Kirk Cousins, allegedly, because Kyle Shanahan is there. And Kyle Shanahan and him used to be in Washington together back before Kirk was on the Vikings. He was on the the at-the-time called the Washington Redskins. So this is very interesting in terms of that whole situation. But I'm very, I'm very confused, to be quite honest with you. Um, Minnesota doesn't need to get rid of Kirk Cousins. They gave him a solid deal a couple years ago. Jimmy G might not be the answer, uh, but there's also talks about him sticking around. So I'm not entirely sure what's going on in this situation. Um, it would be interesting to see Kirk Cousins leave Minnesota because then we could see a new quarterback in Minnesota, which could be kind of interesting. Whoa, I just had a thought. Oh my God. What would be really interesting, Pete? Oh my God. If the trade, if the the rumors are true about Kirk Cousins leaving and the whatever's going on over here in Green Bay is interesting. If Aaron Rodgers ended up in Minnesota like Brett Favre. Oh my God. Oh my God. I have to study myself. I literally let that thought just popped into my head. Holy cow. That would be insane. I don't think that that would happen, but oh my God, how crazy would that be? Okay. Um, so that's one of the rumors I heard. Another rumor, which is probably a little bit more true is about JJ Watt. JJ Watt, after Deshaun Watson has come out and said like, yeah, no, I'm gone. See you later, everybody. I'm out of here. Um, after that whole situation, which also, if you haven't watched my tea time video, which I have, clipped out of my episode and put on my YouTube channel, I suggest checking it out. I will put it in the little info box, wherever it is up here or up here, um, on the YouTube channel. And if you're listening on the podcast, I suggest going, checking out the YouTube channel and watching my video about Deshaun Watson and the Houston Texans. So, um, JJ Watt is also seems like he might be on his way out of Houston. And I don't know if it's for the same reasons as Deshaun, but I know that they, you know, there was that video of JJ saying he was sorry that they wasted one of his years, all that stuff. So I think JJ is pretty upset with this organization as well. And as we know, it's a bit of a dumpster fire right now. There are different places where JJ could or could not end up. Um, I would love if the Giants could pick him up. I really do. I would love that. Do we have the money for him? Absolutely not. But that him and Blake Martinez on the same defensive line, whoo-hoo, that would make me a happy gal. But it's probably not going to happen, as well as the Steelers. The Steelers don't have enough money for a third lot, brother. I'm telling you that right now. So the things that could happen with J.J. Watt is he could end up in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, making their defense even stronger than it already is. They could end up in the Patriots. That would also be interesting. And finally, you know, he could end up at the LA Chargers alongside Joey Bosa, which would be an electric defense. So where he ends up, I'm not sure. But J.J. Watt is definitely, probably, definitely maybe on the move. (laughs) So um, we'll definitely have to keep a lookout for Mr. J.J. because I'm very intrigued. If... If, I'm just going to say this really quick, if the Giants somehow do end up getting J.J. Watt, I would actually lose my mind. I would lose my mind. I would just absolutely crawl into a hole and scream and then come out crying and then just be very happy. I would, it would be outstanding. So, will it happen? I'm going to guess no, but if it did, wow. You would just have a full hour of me just ranting 
about J.J. Watt and the Giants. But I digress. Those are the rumors that I heard, and I kind of wanted to put them out here because it'll be interesting to jump back to these rumors when certain other things may or may not come true. So I wanted to throw that out there. Okay, now what we really should be talking about right now is the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl is coming up, man. It's in a couple of days now. We'll have our last game of the 2020-21 season. I'm very, very excited. Now, I want to go into a couple pros and some cons of each team and so on and so forth. Before we get into that, though, I do just want to toss out a couple things. First things first, we got to like kind of put on notice week 12 of the regular season where the Chiefs played the Buccaneers and ended up winning 27 to 24. Now, it was a good game. You know, that was a nice close game between Patrick and Tom. Really great things. But this game puts them at a tied record. So Tom has won two against Patrick Mahomes and Patrick has won two against Tom Brady. This Super Bowl, the amount that is on the line for Patrick Mahomes in this game, if Patrick Mahomes comes out, I just want to throw this out there real quick, comes out and wins this game against Tom Brady, putting him at three and two, basically, in their series, the the, the one that puts them over the top being the Super Bowl, Super Bowl 55, This literally actually symbolizes the the passing of the torch. Tom Brady losing a Super Bowl to Patrick Mahomes, if it happens, if it happens, will literally be passing the torch to Patrick Mahomes as the guy, uh, the goat, if you will. I don't know if that's really an acceptable term at this point in Patrick Mahomes' career. He's fantastic. He's excellent. Goat is a bit of a stretch. Tom Brady is, you know, a GOAT. He is really one of the greatest of all time. He is a fantastic best quarterback we have ever seen. I've never known life without Tom Brady. I've never seen Tom Brady not play football. He was drafted in like 2000. I was like four years old when Tom Brady came into the league. So this whole thing is very much on the line for Patrick. And I'm sure that he knows that. He doesn't, he doesn't need me to rant about that on a podcast on behalf of him. He knows. He knows what's going on. But this game is going to be so, I hope, insanely good because of the fact that we have two of the best quarterbacks in the league versing one another. And obviously with Pat, uh, with Tom on an NFC team now, it became possible that they were able to do this. So also uh, just a quick little stat that I had seen on a CBS article Um, It said no AFC team has ever beaten an NFC twice in one season, which would make sense, obviously, based off of their scheduling. But let's talk a little bit about uh, the pros and the cons and so on and so forth. Let's start with the Buccaneers, all right? I don't want the Buccaneers to win this game. I'm going to tell you that right now. I'm rooting for the Chiefs. I will be wearing my Patrick Mahomes shirt that I wore last year. (laughs) I'm really just like... So rooting for the Chiefs, and I don't want Tom Brady to get another win. But obviously, the biggest strength of the Buccaneers in this team is Tom Brady. He literally brought a team that has not seen the playoffs since 2007 to the Super Bowl. He literally, like I said, I I think last week, I said he literally covered his eyes, pointed, saw Tampa Bay on the map and said, oh, hey, you guys want to go to the Super Bowl? And he did that. He did that. I mean, to also go off the fact that Buccaneers have so many weapons now. They have Chris Godwin. They have Mike Evans. They have Robert Gronkowski. They have uh, Leonard Fournette. They have Ronald Jones II. They have an insanely good offense, as well as a very, very good defense. So this team is very strong, which is why they made it to the Super Bowl, which is why they beat Aaron Rodgers last week or two weeks ago in the NFC Championship game. This defense was able to stop Drew Brees. This defense put four interceptions on Drew Brees, probably his last game in the NFL ever, Uh, which makes me so sad, but, you know, it is what it is. This defense is very 
powerful and is intuitive and can read offenses. Again, also Tom Brady is there, who is obviously the like two minute king. Like he is the two minute man. You give him down by like seven points or six points or three points in the last two minutes of the game. Goodbye to you. You will be losing, you know, like don't put the ball in Tom Brady's hands when he's under pressure because that's where he thrives. He loves pressure so much. So the Buccaneers, while they have all of this amazing, amazing things about them, they also struggle with their pass defense, which, which is our nice transition to where the the Chiefs thrive. Once again, thrive is that that's the word of the day here. The Chiefs, you know, Patrick Mahomes being on this team and having Travis Kelsey and Tyreek Hill out in the 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 field for him to throw to that is going to be very very difficult for the buccaneers defense to guard also the buccaneers two safeties uh whitehead and winfield both were injured um 2 weeks ago one of them whitefield or whitehead sorry was in the game and then got hurt and then winfield just never even came into the game he was hurt so those two safeties are extremely important especially for someone like Tyreek Hill, who is the cheetah, which is, I have my, uh, my headscarf in, my cheetah print headscarf on today, um, because if you guys remember Brittany Bennett, who was on my show a couple weeks ago, she has an Instagram page called Football is Female, and right now she is conducting a spirit week, like a Super Bowl spirit week, which is very cute, and today is Tyreek Tuesday, because today is Tuesday as we're recording this, Tyreek Tuesday is wear some sort of animal print, so I am wearing my cheetah headscarf. So anyway, I digress. Speaking of Tyreek Hill, he, (laughs) the last time that these two teams met up against each other in week 12, Tyreek Hill ran or received 200 yards in the first quarter. In the first quarter, not the first half, the first quarter. So the thing that the, the, I think what they were able to accomplish in the week 12 game as well as what they should do in this Super Bowl game is the Chiefs absolutely need to come out blazing guns. They need to get on top within the first at least the first half of this game. Tom Brady again, and don't give Tom Brady the ball at the end of the game. If Tom Brady is pushed down and pushed down and pushed down for all four quarters of the game, he will not win. And that's the, what the Chiefs need to do in order to beat this team because Tom Brady is a gunslinger. He can make these insane throws. Uh, My dad and I were watching a video on Rob Gronkowski, who I know is not in his prime right now, but is an immaculate athlete, really an immaculate athlete. He's a blocker. He's the, the way that Travis Kelsey is now. Travis Kelsey is such a Swiss army knife for this Kansas City team. It's in, it blows my mind that this man can run a route outside, cut up the middle like a wide receiver, and get th- th- the ball thrown to him while he's in the middle of the field with two defenders. And instead of going down when those two defenders attack, like, you know, go to defend, obviously, Travis Kelsey is strong enough and brute enough to push those defenders down to gain another two, four, six, seven, eight yards, you know, like he can push through it. So this team, this Chiefs team is so good and I will be rooting for them. I really will. But throughout this whole season, Tom Brady has made me look like a fool all the time. I keep rooting against him. I rooted against him in the NFC Championship game. I rooted against him. Oh, well, I didn't root against him in the wild card game. I really thought that he was going to beat the the Washington team, but the Washington team put up a fight and were able to kind of give us a game. Uh, in the, in the, throughout the regular season, a bunch of times I was like, oh, Tom Brady, nah, not this time, not this time, not this time. And he constantly, constantly, constantly proves me wrong. So what I think I'm going to say here is my heart pick is the Chiefs and my head pick is the Buccaneers. Because again, people are saying left and right, the Chiefs are going to win this game. The Chiefs are going to win this game. This is Tom Brady's 10th. Super Bowl appearance, and I don't think that's by accident. 
and I can't root against him any longer. I probably rooted against him. I pro- I would say I rooted against him in the Super Well, obviously the Giants Super Bowls, which they both won, and I rooted against him in every Super Bowl he's been in, and yet look at where we are now. I, I really think that Tom Brady, the magic man, is going to show up and do some insane things And while Patrick Mahomes is going to put up a fight, while this Chiefs team, while this Chiefs defense is going to put up a huge, huge fight against the Buccaneers, something's going to happen. The Bucs are going to capitalize off of some mistake and the Buccaneers are going to win. That's how I feel. And I really want the Chiefs to win. And I do think that they have the opportunity to. I just don't know if Tom Brady's going to let them access that opportunity. So that's where I'm laying right now with this, with this whole, you know, uh, Super Bowl predictions thing. Again, I really want the Chiefs to win, and I think that they're, this game will be good. It'll be upsetting if it's not, because this is like the Super Bowl that a lot of people have been waiting for. And I just, I do think that somehow Tom Brady is going to get his seventh ring. So um, that's where we're going to lay down our line here for (laughs) the the Super Bowl. Next week, when the Super Bowl happens and we have our Super Bowl episode, very exciting stuff. It's our 100th episode of The Girl Who Talks Sports. And um, I don't know. I'm I'm not going to tell you who our guest is. I already have our guest planned. Um, I'll say it's a she. And she's very special and very special to me and to the show So, um, I'm sure that you guys can figure it out just by my context clues, but I'm very excited. The hundredth episode of the Girl Who Talks Sports will be our Super Bowl episode. Very, very exciting stuff. All right. So let's get into our segments for our show this week. So as per usual, let's start off with my favorite segment on the show. Oh, I'm sorry. Our first segment on the show and my favorite segment on the show Tea time. Tea time is my favorite segment on the show because we delve into the hot, steamy gossip of the sports world. And this week, believe it or not, it is not football related. Oh, yes. We are jumping into our NBA pocket that every once in a while we stick in and we pull out like, you know, when you stick your hand in a pocket and you find like a dime and you're like, oh, have fun. Uh, That's how I feel about the NBA. (laughs) So, um, and of course it's tea time. There's always tea in the NBA. Let's be real. I think my first tea time ever was NBA related. So that's interesting. Um, this is something I think a lot of people are talking about right now. It happened like, like Monday night, I think. So it's fairly recent. Uh, basically let's, let's just go down to exactly what happened in this whole situation. A woman was ejected from the Lakers game. Uh, with her husband because she got into a fight with LeBron James courtside. So, um, you know, I'm just going to write on my bucket list really quick. Uh, get into fight with LeBron James at a courtside Lakers game. Going to write that. That would be a dream of mine, to be quite honest with you. Um, this woman, who they're, they're calling her courtside Karen, uh, which, you know, is... <laughs> Catchy, but also, like, you couldn't think of anything a little bit more, you know, intuitive or anything, but whatever. So her real name is Juliana Carlos, and she was ejected with her husband, uh, Danny Carlos, something like that. I, Mr. Carlos, we'll call him. Um, and it was because apparently she yelled some stuff at LeBron James. So I've seen a lot of different things about this. It's very interesting because I saw a video of hers that she posted on her social media that said, this is what happened. Um, LeBron James, you know, I don't know if the husband said something to LeBron James, but LeBron James yelled at this woman's husband, Mr. Carlos, and um, she stood up. And pulled her mask down, which isn't the best thing to do, but she was angry, I guess. And she said, uh, don't talk to my husband that way. I'm pulling out all the expletives also, because I know we try to keep it a little bit clean on this podcast. So, and he told her, you know, shut the F up, you witch with a B. 
Um, which not, you know, not the best thing to say, LeBron. I don't think you handled the situation very well. But also then, like, they asked LeBron about it in his post, you know, post-game conference, and he was like, oh, you know, like, it is what it is, but I wish that, like, you know, I'm happy to have the fans back. And the, and I was like, what? Like, what's happening? And also she was like, he said something to my husband, so I said something back. And I'm like, I feel like nobody is at fault here, but the tea is still spicy. It's still hot and steamy. Um, again... I don't know if the husband said something to LeBron that then triggered him to say something back and then have her defend her husband. I don't know what happened in that regard. Um, Another thing that's very interesting is that she said she's 25 years old. And I'm just going to tell you right now, I'm going to be 25 in like five months and we don't look the same age. I'll just leave it at that. So this woman very fiery, very much, you know, a ride or die kind of person that's standing up for her husband against LeBron James, who, you know, I'm I'm curious. I actually don't know how tall LeBron James is. Hey Siri, how tall is LeBron James? LeBron James is six feet nine inches tall. He is six foot nine. This woman looked my height. So again, um, putting stars next to this on my bucket list because I would love to go up against LeBron James. But 6'9", six, 6'9", nine. Six, nine. and this woman is tiny and skinny. Like she's not like this like brolic woman or anything like that. So this whole thing is very interesting. And again, like LeBron was like, uh, I don't know exactly what his wording was, but it basically sounded like he wish he handled it differently or she didn't say anything or what, or that they weren't going to get ejected. That was the whole thing that he said he wished they weren't ejected. Um, and cause they were both taken out of the arena. So the T here is just the fact that LeBron James was going to fight a very tiny blonde woman, which is very interesting. And the fact that this tiny little blonde woman was ready to throw hands with LeBron James. Absolutely. Just spectacular. Really? <laughs> So that's our tea time for this week. And um, our let's talk about it this week um, is the serious conversation that I was mentioning earlier. Um, It's going to bring our energy down just a little bit, but I think that it's definitely a conversation that needs to be said. And I'm not one to stray away, especially um, for women's rights and things like this on this podcast, because I'm a woman in a male oriented field. So I like to make sure that I talk about things like this. So this week on our Let's Talk About It, we are going to talk about Chad Wheeler and the domestic violence that he has pled not guilty to, but it seems like there is some damning evidence. Chad Wheeler um, used to play for the Seattle Seahawks. I believe he was a free agent or is a free agent at this point in time. Um, He has a, it just so happens that he has a black girlfriend. He is a white man. And he told her that he needs, that she needs to bow down to him. When she refused, he strangled her, thinking that he had killed her, walked into his kitchen and made a smoothie and began drinking it. She then walked, regained consciousness, walked back into where he was, and he said, oh, wow, you're still alive. If you haven't seen the pictures, they are horrific. They're awful, awful pictures. And this man pled not guilty. Um, in this case against him now, he has also been released from jail. So I just want to say the NFL, while we absolutely love it, I absolutely love the NFL. I love football. I love everything about it, except for the fact that the way they discipline men who have domestic violence in their past or that they're dealing with or something along those lines, you know, we can jump back to Ray Rice. We can jump back to Kareem Hunt. There was even um, a point about Ezekiel Elliott, possibly at a um, at a music festival, I believe. And the thing is, a lot of people are not coming to Wheeler's defense, but they're like, well, there's no evidence. There's no video like these other guys have had against them. And that shouldn't matter. That really shouldn't matter. If this woman is coming out with a bruised face and bruised neck and PTSD at this point as well, we should be believing her. We should be able to say that woman is telling the truth. And it doesn't matter if the man is the the highest celebrity or the highest athlete or whatever. A lot of people weren't talking about this because they didn't know who Chad Wheeler was. 
I don't know who Chad Wheeler is, but he is in the NFL and he is not getting disciplined for what he's done. And while this is still in the case, we always know that the NFL and the legal system have separate things that they do. Um, so whether they test, uh, you know, they say they test positive for drugs or something, they'll, you know, and, and they don't get any prison time or jail time, the NFL will still, you know, discipline them and they'll suspend them for four games. That's another thing. The fact that the, the NFL will suspend you for four games for smoking weed, but if you are in a domestic violence altercation, they only suspend you for two, which doesn't make any sense to me. So the moral of the story here, and as a woman who obviously, thank God, I've never been involved in domestic violence before, but there are women out there that deal with this all the time and their husbands aren't celebrities and they don't get the press recognition like this one is getting at this point in time. So I just want to come out here and I don't want to drag on about this and, and make anybody upset or anything along those lines, but please like believe women and don't silence women. And if they want to come forward and talk about what's happened to them, just like listen to them and believe them because a lot of times people won't believe what women are saying and they'll take the man's side. And while the man has been abusing people or his wife or his girlfriend, it's not only physically, it's mentally, it's emotionally. And it's really important to make sure that this is something, this is a bigger issue than just the NFL. So I just want to put that out there. I will put um, some domestic violence um, information and things to reach out to in case you need it in the description of both my podcast info and my YouTube video info. So if you are dealing with domestic violence and not sure what to do, I will make sure that I put some very informative things in, um, in very easily accessible bios and um, descriptions. So that is all I'm going to say about that right now. Again, I'm sorry to bring down the mood, but it's definitely a conversation that needs to be had. And the fact that I'm talking about this is because an NFL player was involved and it's not the first time an NFL player was involved. And unfortunately, it probably won't be the last time. So again, I implore you, please, please, when a woman says with a bruised face and bruised neck that she's being abused, just, I would listen and believe her. But, um... Let's move on and we're going to bring we're going to bring the energy back up again because I think that that's um, a little bit important to end off our show. So usually I do our tweet of the week, but instead this week, a fun little switcheroony, this week we are doing our TikTok of the week. <laughs> so our TikTok of the week is a TikTok that I saw and it is... Um, a conspiracy theory, an NFL conspiracy theory. Um, I will play, you don't really need to see the actual footage of it to, to, you know, hear it. I'll put it in the YouTube video, but I'll also play the audio right now on the podcast so that you guys can hear it. So here, here is our conspiracy from, um, the Drew Allen underscores his TikTok. So I just happened to see this just on my For You page. It came up, um, and it's about the Trevor Lawrence conspiracy theory. So let's take a listen. I believe that Trevor Lawrence purposely lost the game against Ohio State. He wanted to do all that he could to lower his draft stock and raise Justin Fields. The plan is for the Jacksonville Jaguars to take Fields at number one and for the New York Jets to stick with Sam Darnold, especially after winning the last two games. Picks three through 13 don't really need a quarterback. But if you look at pick number 14, the New England Patriots. Bill Belichick planned to tank as much as possible because he knows that he has the most job security of any coach in the NFL. Bill Belichick is an evil genius that might pull off the biggest draft steal of all time. So there you have it. That's our TikTok of the week instead of our tweet of the week this week. I wanted to talk about it because it was just like, you know, I don't put it past old Bill to do something along those lines. And and at this point, I'll believe anything. I'm a big old conspiracy theorist, theorist, theory. Anyway, so I just wanted to throw that out there to you guys. Not really going to talk too much about it, but just planting the seed in your guys' brains in case draft time comes around and Trevor Lawrence, the previous number one pick in the draft, ends up the 14th pick because Bill Belichick wanted him. 
I just, I would be floored. All right. So actually, since this is a bit of a shorter episode with no interview this week, we are going to end off our show with our feel good story of the week. So this week, our feel good story is actually jumping off of, I believe last week when I feel good story was the fact that out of the 22,000 people attending the Super Bowl in Tampa this year or this weekend, um, 7,500 of them will be vaccinated healthcare workers. And I was actually wondering, like, oh, I wonder how they picked these people, uh, which is interesting. But the feel good story of the week this week is the fact that on the show on NFL Network Good Morning Football, which I love, um, they surprised RJ Gardner, who is a travel nurse, with a ticket to the Super Bowl. So he was shown on live TV that he was he was told that he was going to the Super Bowl. And the reaction is, of course, it's priceless. It's just things like that. Like, we love that. It warms our heart. It makes us happy. Makes us just feel really, really good. So I just wanted to throw that out there and let you guys know that, you know, the NFL, while we had just mentioned there's a few things that could be fixed, there are also a few things that they do quite well. So congrats to RJ Gardner and everybody else, healthcare workers who are going to the Super Bowl this weekend. That's like super exciting. And it's in Tampa, Florida. You're like, you're not going to a Super Bowl in like Minneapolis or something. Like you're going to Florida, which is still really exciting. And they are vaccinated. So that's also a plus. So everyone, thank you so, so much for listening to the show this week. That's going to do it for our pre-Super Bowl episode. Um, Next week will be a little bit more interesting, talking about the Super Bowl with our very special guest on our very special 100th Super Bowl episode. I'm super, super excited. Um, So once again, everyone, don't forget to subscribe and or follow on all podcasting platforms. And also don't forget to leave us a review because it's super helpful. And also don't forget to follow, or I'm sorry, subscribe to our YouTube channel. The Girl Who Talks Sports, where we post full-length podcast videos and extra content videos. And finally, don't forget to follow us on social media at TGWTS Podcast. All right, everybody. I hope you all have a fun, fantastic, sports-filled day. Please wash your hands, wear your mask, social distance, all of that good stuff. And I will see next time I see you guys, we will know who our Super Bowl winners are. So, everyone... Super excited to see you guys next week. And once again, have a super fun, fantastic sports filled day. Bye.